when I look at what's happening in the world, memory and storage are working together to deliver data for this AI revolution that we're going through. And that's why we're talking today about how data is at the heart of AI. A research firm called Cognolytica did a survey, and they talked to AI data scientists, they talked to researchers, and they said, what do you spend your time on? And it's a variety of tasks, but everything can pretty much fit into two areas. The exciting stuff is algorithm development. That's where people develop the most advanced models, they fine tune them. It's the kind of the glamorous side of AI. Then there's data preparation. That's the boring stuff. But it's really important for training, gathering your data, sorting your data, cleaning it. This data prep is essential groundwork. And even though it's not glamorous, it's 100% required. I want you to think, how much time do you think all of these experts in the survey spent in data preparation as opposed to algorithm development? So, you know, anywhere from all their time on data prep to no time on data prep. I'll tell you the answer later. <laughs> so, one of the interesting things that we've been doing is looking at the AI data pipeline. And it breaks down into a number of stages. And it's really critical for us to visualize what's happening in AI, because each stage of the pipeline is a different application, a different workload, and requires a different solution. But it's not a one-size-fit-all world. So AI starts on the right with capturing data. It's a really critical phase. It happens everywhere, in your car, in your phone, your PC, your company. Transactional databases, the weather outside, the universe, things that are bombarding us everywhere. Only 95%, uh, I'm sorry, only 5% of the data that is generated do we actually capture. So huge opportunity there. But even all of that data that gets captured still is a massive amount of data that feeds into the next stage, which is ingest, okay? During ingest, all this data that's sitting in uh, relational databases, data lakes. It needs to feed its way into a giant storage array. And that's where we've seen so much interest lately in these very large capacity SSDs. These arrays not just, don't just ingest the data, but they actually serve data to the other stages of the pipeline after the ingest phase. Then you have transformation and data preparation. That was what we were talking about, where some of you thought people spend maybe 75% or upwards of their time. Cleaning the data, validating it, deduplicating it, there's a lot of work that happens there. Uh, and then you get to the really exciting stuff, the most challenging workload that's ever been performed on the face of the earth, training these giant LLM models. Failures and any downtime cost companies millions of dollars and every flop of computational storage needs to be harvested. It's really an incredible challenge for the data centers that are spending now hundreds of billions of dollars on this problem. And finally, ingest, I'm sorry, finally inference. And in the inference stage, that's where hopefully companies begin to start harvesting the investment that they've made. And this is where efficiency is king because the AI factories of the future are gonna compete on tokenomics and how they can create tokens more efficiently to solve our problems. So what have we been up to at Micron? We spent a lot of time in the lab studying these different workloads at the memory and storage interfaces. And we've used that information to help us guide our product development and definition of products. And we've developed a portfolio of products that address the different needs of the entire pipeline. So I'm gonna walk you through today the different stages from ingest, transformation, training, and inference, and tell you a little bit about what we think is important for each of those stages and how we're solving those problems. So during ingest, it's all about storage capacity. Really, this is the stage where storage is king and memory plays a supporting role. Uh, at the more capacity you can get, power efficiently drives rack consolidation, energy savings, and 
all of the things that are going to allow us for, to replace the HDD legacy infrastructure in the data center. And then memory capacity is also important because we're putting so much storage into an array that we need more memory for translation tables, write buffering, logging, and um, data, pushing data through into the storage and then back out. Now let's talk about the transform pipeline because when you get to transformation, storage plays more of a backseat role. It's still important. You need a lot of small reads and writes to the storage device, but memory becomes critical because data is flowing through these systems at a very high rate. It's being deduplicated, labeled, cleaned, checked. All this gunk has to be cleaned up so we can get to training. So that means you need a lot of capacity and you need a lot of bandwidth for all the reading and writing. It's kind of somewhat similar to some uh, large scale database problems in the data center that we've seen before. So now let's move on to the really fun stuff. This is when you say AI, this is what everyone thinks about, right? Training, inference, and look, the AI, the IO profiles maxed out, right? You can't get any more. I need all the capacity, I need all the bandwidth, all the latency, maximum power efficiency. On the storage side, a little bit less because a lot of the data is stored on the network in that ingest server, but you still need a lot of local bandwidth, IOPS, power efficiency. And why is the, why is the power efficiency so critical? Well, in this rack, in the GPU servers, there's so much power, and these elements are sitting there right next to the GPU already. Things have moved to liquid cooled on the memory and on the GPU and the CPU. Now the next generation liquid cooling is coming to the SSD. And when you're trying to move all that heat out of the system, every watt makes a big difference in terms of what, how, what performance you can actually deliver. So, you know, absolutely critical power efficiency, so important, and capacity bandwidth. I mean, these systems are expensive and you don't want to waste one flop. So they are just insatiable in terms of the amount of data that they can absorb on a nonstop basis. All that's coming through. You know, I, uh, I'm really proud of the team at Micron. I want to thank all of them for bringing together an entire family of products based on the industry's leading ninth generation node G9 flash. Uh, our 6600 is perfect for capture and ingest, the 7600 for all the mainstream data applications, and the 9650, our Gen 6 SSD, the first and fastest drive in the market. Now, inference doesn't just live in the data center, and I know I just spent a lot of time talking about the data center. And the data center is critical. There's a lot happening there. But inference does move to the edge as well. And at Micron, we've been spending a lot of time developing products and working with our partners to bring uh, optimal solutions to market for the edge. So now I know you, you want to know the answer. I'm going to tell you. I wouldn't leave you hanging. Um, how much time was spent on data preparation. So here's the, the details of how they said they spent their time. But believe it or not, 80% of the researchers' time during the survey was spent on data preparation. And that's the problem that we're trying to solve. And it's why our CEO, Sanjay Marotra, says, without data, there's no AI. And what I say, and why I say, uh, Data is at the heart of AI. And so if we can help to make this process faster and smoother for our customers, then they can spend more time on the glamorous algorithmic wizardry and the problems that are going to solve all of humanity's woes.